feel like making a dramatic gesture, that'd be a great one. Turn it backwards. Do it. I remember one time we took you kids to the ocean and, and you had this ball cap and decided to wear it sideways because that was a style at the time. Probably still is somewhere. <laughs> Perhaps I shouldn't bring that up. No, no. But si any embarrassing stories about me or my brother, it's great. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Oh, we're, we're rolling good. already? We're good. Yeah, this is it. Are we rolling? You're rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. To be alone with you. <laughs> okay, you're going to have to stop doing Dylan. Okay. So. So, yeah. How'd you meet my dad? Well, here we are. I think, first of all, we should say that uh, we are way back in 2011. Cinco de Mayo, 2011. For all of the future posterity and to whom it may concern, who might possibly view this film at any time in the future, which is now, for instance. <clears throat> and uh, I am here with uh, Brooke and Nat at their special request to produce a film on the uh, experiences of uh, Steve Morris, Brooke's father, on his 60th birthday. Well, not his experiences on his 60th birthday, but all days previous to his 60th birthday that I am personally responsible for or share an experience with. And uh, over to you, Brooke. <laughs> Is that the part we're gonna edit no, out? No, yeah, no, cheers, cheers. Wait a minute, you gotta look straight in the man's eyes when you say that. Cheers. Cheers. But see, I was looking in my dad's eyes. Okay, well that's important too. But as your dad would say, here's blood in your stool. <laughs> okay, so I've never heard my dad say that before. Well, you want to hear a few things that you haven't heard before. That is exactly why we're doing this. Okay, exactly well, that's one this. of them. Hopefully, I won't cross any lines that are too solidly drawn. But we'll find out. Yeah, the, the audience loves juicy stories. Okay, well, <clears throat> I hope um, I can produce some without being too indiscreet. I know you haven't been feeling good, and I feel like the, uh, the bronchitis is actually adding a timber to your voice, a richness. Ah, it's good. Yeah. It's good. I'm I glad you, it's there. I'm glad you think so. Yeah. Good for something. It isn't any good for me, but maybe it would be good for the... For the crowd. Exactly. It's all about the audience. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's my dad's 60th birthday. And everybody loves Steve. Everybody. Yep. And Darn tootin'. For good reason. Such as? I knew, you, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> well, he is a friend beyond all friends. He thinks that I'm a good friend. He tells me what a wonderful friend I am. But if I ever come up to half the friend he has been to me all these years, I uh, think I would have died and went to heaven. But um, he's been there for me through thick and thin. And there has been some thin, especially in recent years. But um, I've ditched him in some incredible circumstances where his very life was at stake. Like that time, for instance, that he wanted to get some muscles after we'd been diving. We were out of our wetsuits, in our clothes, and he has this idea that we will go back down to the water and he will go right 
down to where the waves are crashing and get some mussels. And um, I was to tell him when a big wave was coming in so that he wouldn't get wet or worse, swept out to sea. <laughs> so I did pretty good for the first couple of waves that weren't too bad, you know. I'd say, hey, there's a wave coming. Get out of there now, Steve. Well, it wasn't long before long came the wave of all waves. And uh, I, I choked. I just turned around and got out of there. <laughs> and uh, he got wet. He got real wet. So I, I, I felt bad about that. In fact, I feel bad about that to this day. Actually, I meant it for a joke, but he got so wet that it really wasn't all that funny. So that that's you know and, so and yet he still he really, hangs he still hangs out with me he thinks you've been there for him he thinks so yeah yep. that particular time i let him down but if i had another chance if he ever needed anything again but he's so self-reliant that uh, i can't imagine him ever needing anything again but i would love to redeem myself at some he's, point if that was possible. He's probably learned his lesson and he's just stopped asking you for stuff after that, right? <clears throat> that could very well be. I mean, he didn't get to be 60 years old by rolling rocks up hills. He is a learner. I'll give him that. Over to you, Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chip. Um, one of the reasons my dad holds you so dear is because he's in constant awe of you. He says you, he says when he's on a trip with you, he's looking at your butt because you are just, you Out know, there, you're doing. gone. You're, you're up the hill. He wishes he was as fast as you. He wishes he was as clever as you. He wishes he was as good of a poet as you. But what about my dad? do you wish you could be like? What, oh. what has he got going on? Well, I would say that uh, one of the things I admire about your dad is that uh, he gets a lot of joy out of what he does. Okay. I mean, I get some, I get joy out of what I do, but he is more, um, way more responsible than I am. For instance, okay. Innately, uh, he, uh, you walk into his garage. What do you see? Everything is in order. It's all right there. You could eat your dinner off of his floor and uh, where you might not off of my table. You know what I mean? In fact, you probably wouldn't off of my table. In fact, I would advise you not to, actually. But um, uh, like he goes over to your the, the plumbing shop that your grandfather used to have and he's getting that thing in shape. He's working over there. He's, he'd rather do that than a lot of stuff that, uh, that we might consider entertainment. He's going to get greater satisfaction out of bringing value to property. Uh, he spent countless hours at your grandmother's house. Uh, using his skills, learning things as he went along, getting immeasurable joy out of those experiences, loving every minute of it, um, while he was um, maintaining that property, getting it ready to sell. 
um, improving, improving, improving. So uh, that's a that's a real attribute. I also get a little bit of joy out of fixing, maintaining, and this, that, and the other thing, but I lack the stick that he has. I mean, he sees the big picture, goes for the big picture, uh, has a confidence uh, in his abilities and skills and um, knows what has to be done and goes after it. Um, I probably do that in the business world, but uh, have fallen short in the... <laughs> <laughs> pardon me in in the home improvement arena um, so there's a uh, there's a uh, there's an area where I admire what he's got going on um, I uh, admire the way that he is devoted to his family and uh, loves his kids big time. Um, how he is uh, constantly uh, maintaining the relationships and uh, regardless of what's going on uh, he loves his kids and will